Hey, Rosa. This is Professor Vitt. I want to thank you so much for turning in a draft. I'm going to go ahead and work through my general comments at the end first. Um, let me do this to make them a little bit easier to read. Do this. Okay. And then here, um, just one quick thing. I am going to reduce the number of spaces here, not because it's really anything wrong, but because it just tends to, to be a little bit more clean um, that way. But it's okay, don't worry about it. Okay, uh, general comments. Um, you really don't have very many grammatical or typographical errors in this paper. Um, you have a really good way of composing your thoughts. Um, and I think repeated writing and rewriting will only continue to strengthen you as a writer. <clears throat> I think you've got a good knack for it. I think you've got a very nice voice, right? It's plain and concise language, so it's good. Um, two, I really, 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 really enjoyed the topic. I thought it was a great one. You know, uh, my own mother is you know, way into, not way into, but she believes in astrology and um you know, it's a really difficult situation to be in to question somebody's beliefs like that because they tend to think that you're questioning their competency or their sanity, you know. Um, and that's even more difficult when you're questioning your own beliefs because you really, we have a tendency to think that our beliefs reflect our competence and that's just not true. So that's, that's one reason why I really liked the fifth part of your paper you mentioned here in your conclusion. Um, but right here, where you're really getting, you're sort of drilling down um, as to, you know, why your mother still believes in it and what that interaction is like. I think that's a really powerful part of the paper. Um, okay, so that much being said, uh, that's the general comments. I think you're well at a, a strong B here, if not an A. Um, so I'm just going to run through the rest of my comments. And I think that this is a paper where, you know, you'll be able to make revisions to make it even better than it is already. So um, I like the title, Mistakes and Corrections Equal Learning. Uh, it's catchy and it tells me about the nature of your paper, right? Um, tells me enough to make me think, oh, okay, well, what corrections and what mistakes and what learning? So it's good. Um, Excellent thesis, short and concise. The aim of this paper is to discuss the time I was wrong about astrology. Dynamite. Um, I like your organization here. I think it's really good. Um, and, you know, just from the get-go, I mean, family influences and, and friends and, you know, girlfriends and boyfriends. I mean, anytime you're dealing with someone who has different belief systems, or excuse me, you know, you're questioning their belief systems, it can be really tough. And I thought the strength of your paper is that you really present these beliefs and their investigation within a social context, and that's really important. Um, okay, so let's see. First, really, really good sense of your family in this first paragraph. And I, as I said, I think that's a strength of this paper is that you don't just discuss the belief, but you discuss the context in which the belief is doing things and working. And, um, it comes through really clearly, so very good. Um, um, I made a comment here, which I think I would revise later. No, 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 I, I, I would keep this the same. Um, so look, you, you talk about how um, your sign and your girlfriend's sign. Um, I'm thinking that I would, if I were you, I would double down at this point on the in the paper and say, look, I thought that these were all correct representations. They really seem to fit her personality. They seem to fit mine. They apply to specific instances. You know, what more evidence would I need? And then that way, when you make that little comment clear, you know, and who knows what you would put, right? Like these, these uh, horoscopes seemed to be accurate to me. They reflected, you know, our traits. Whatever you want to say, however you want to say that, um, it gives the reader a sense of like, yeah, you know, these things seem really good, right? These seem to be correct, and I, I'm on board. One of the most effective styles of writing is when you kind of convince your reader of a position first, and then you go around and you sort of poof, destroy it. And I think if you added a little bit more about how, yeah, you know, this this seems right. My girlfriend's sign is Cancer and 
reporting that she's moody and pessimistic and you know this seems to fit her sometimes da -da -da -da, something like that and, and then you know my sign is this da -da -da -da, and there's this concern that we weren't gonna fit right according to this so maybe that maybe the idea that this wasn't an initial match according to astrology was one of the things that kind of set you thinking oh, i just don't know because i think we're a great match right um maybe that's what you're already trying to indicate and i'm just totally clueless as a reader and and, and you were being subtle if that's the case i apologize um <clears throat> let's see um Yeah, I, I just liked this portion of the paper, right? There's not much more that I should say. Um, I, I like here that you do start to question, you know, what is a relationship without fights and arguments and so forth? But you might hold off until the fourth section where you actually rectify the, the illusion, right? Where you just say, okay, you don't even need to talk about... Um, you know why it's wrong here because i think you, you have a strong discussion below about why it's wrong so um um so i i would do this i would i would talk a little bit more teensy bit more about the accuracy of the horoscopes we haven't covered this yet in class and so that explains maybe why this paper isn't more robust in that way but the general idea is they're really vague you know it's very subjective as to whether or not a, a a prediction is met. So consider, um, as you did above, that you know most people are going to get into an argument or a disagreement of some kind at some point every few days or every week. I mean, it's just sort of the nature of life, right? There's, it's hardly a prediction; it's a trend, and we all face it, right? And then, two, another point you might make is, um, um, not only can we stretch the language, but we can stretch any number of totally different events to fit that kind of a case. So for instance, the original statement that you're talking about, this evening will bring some tension and grumpy attitudes, but what you will learn tonight will be valuable. Okay, this could be true of a night when I'm watching The Walking Dead, and they're talking about, you know, some tension in the in the show, right, or American Horror Story or something like that. Um, this is true when, you know, my son doesn't want to go to bed, right? He just says, no, I don't want to go to bed. You know, there's some tension and he's grumpy, right? I mean, you know, but in the end he learns that his body needs his rest or something like that. Um, if somebody walked a dog in the evening, this could be true. Well, you know, my dog was grumpy and he didn't want to get out, but he got out and he peed under a tree and, you know, eh, he's better off for it. I think he learned that walks are good for him, right? Gave blood, right? The person who drew my blood was grumpy, but they learned I was nice and I was doing the right thing, right? Or, you know, people who go out dancing. I mean, this this could be true of them. I didn't want to start dancing, right? You know, I go to a local diner or something. I mean, you know, just almost any event can can be made to fit that description. And so, you know, maybe a little comment like to that end would strengthen the paper a bit. <laughs> um, oh, this point right here. I know you don't mean it very harsh. You said, I feel a bit ridiculous for believing, but I am thankful it wasn't hard for me to have learned this. Um, you should not, <clears throat> for a second, feel ridiculous for believing that or think that it's ridiculous for anyone else to believe it. I mean, <clears throat> our beliefs don't reflect how worthy we are or how competent we are. I mean, beliefs are like anything. You know, we can be wrong about them, and that's perfectly okay. And the more that we're able to just admit that, the better off we are because we'll be able to revise our beliefs more readily when things change. And we live in a world of change, right? I mean, beliefs we have all the time about ourselves, what we're capable of, so forth, all of those things change. And the more malleable we are, the better we're able to adapt to new situations. So, <clears throat> um, let's see. Um, oh, and then just this is a little point about astrology. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Let's see. Um, okay, that's right. Um, you said right here, I don't just blame it on her sign and say, oh, well, right? You think about critically why my girlfriend is in a bad mood. I don't just blame it on her sign and say, oh, well. This is a super important point about astrology, and, and it's kind of floating around on the surface in your paper, which is that if it's really true 
then all of these things that happen to people or things that people do don't seem to be um, things that we should be particularly blameful for. I mean, if somebody is just, you know, if they cut you off and you're driving a car and they say, oh, I'm a, sorry, I'm a Taurus and we're like a bull and I'm just going to smash you down, right? You can't blame me. It's my sign. It's like there's something about astrology that maybe takes away a little bit of our own accountability or our own decision making in, in, uh, in the world. So maybe that's a danger of it. Also, it may take away our, our um, sort of um, the idea that we are able to change things in our lives and we're able to do things. You know, somebody may be inclined to say, well, it's just written in the stars that I was going to fail, right? No, it's, it's not written in the stars that someone was going to fail because, you know, some moon was in the house of Saturn or something, right? I mean, it's, it's, you know, we can control our efforts and, and if we're giving our best effort, fine. If we fail, then, then we fail. But otherwise, you know, we can focus on our efforts. It's not like we have to throw up our hands because the stars say so. Okay. Those are just my two comments, uh, sort of philosophically about what, what's going on. You don't have to incorporate that stuff. If you want to, you can, but don't feel bad about your prior beliefs. You're plenty bright, Rosa. You're an excellent writer, so just don't feel ridiculous about it at all. And then um, you could beef up a little bit how, um, you know, the predictions are vague. So I hope that helps. Yeah, you're looking at a really strong paper here already. You make those corrections and you'll be in great shape. Thank you so much for giving me a draft early. I apologize for not getting it back to you sooner. Why don't you let me know what extension works for you? I'm happy to collect it after spring break. I'm happy to collect it. You know, you can email it to me the Friday before spring break, or you can turn it into me after spring break. You let me know what works for you. Thanks, Rosa, and I'll see you on Wednesday, tomorrow.